Regular meeting of the Madison County Board of Commissioners will be held uh, today is May 20th, 2024 at 30 p.m. at West Tennessee Research and Education Center. Um, Mr. Wall. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we'll all rise because we have our invocation and pledge this morning. Uh, our fellow commissioner, Commissioner Mike Bryant, will be leading us this morning in our invocation. Please bow with me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for our sins. Please guide our recent graduates as they uh, go out into this world. And please be with uh, our students this, this summer. Give them, uh, give them rest. Be with our teachers and our first responders. Um, blessed are they. And thank you for all the many blessings that you've bestowed upon this body and this county. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Two present. I think it's 21, Mr. Chairman. We're waiting on Cindy Bryant. She's here. Okay. And three absent. There we go. <laughs> Approval of the minutes by unanimous consent, unless there's an objection. Is there any public comments? Announcements from the chair. Um, okay. Correct the minutes on that. Announcements from the chair. We want to um, acknowledge the passing of Bart Swift's wife this past week. Uh, we um, hate we have to do this. Seems like every month and keep discussing it and hopefully we'll have uh, some time coming up where we don't have to discuss <coughs> this but we want to keep Bart and his family in our prayers and thoughts moving forward we also need to mention that the Commission Benevolence Fund is uh, is getting really low and if you want to donate to it please donate to Sarah and you can do it anytime and we would appreciate that. And on a good note, we want to recognize Cindy Bryant's birthday. So, <laughs> happy <laughs> birthday. Yeah. You should have stayed in bed a little longer and relaxed on your birthday. So, we end that on a good note. Uh, any report or presentations from the county mayor? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And welcome back to State Side. Hope your trip was, was good. Um, don't have a lot to, to cover today, although... Um, probably could. I would like to read a proclamation. This uh, Next month is Men's Health Month, and so I'm going to read a proclamation that uh, we'll, have, we'll have posted on online just uh, to recognize June as Men's Health Month. It says, whereas despite advances in medical technology and research, men continue to live an average of five years less than women, with Native American and African American men having the lowest life expectancy. And whereas men who are educated about the value of preventative <coughs> health who are more likely to participate in health screenings, and fathers who maintain a healthy lifestyle are role models for their children, and have a happier, healthier children. And whereas Men's Health Network worked with Congress to establish National Men's Health Week as a special campaign to help educate men and their families about the importance of positive health attitudes <coughs> and preventative health practices. And whereas the Men's Health Month website has been established and features resources and information about awareness events, including Wear Blue Day, which is June 14, 2024. And whereas in Madison County, Tennessee, Men's Health Month will focus on a broad range of men's health issues, including heart disease, diabetes, mental health, prostate, testicular, and colon cancer, 
And whereas the citizens of Madison County, Tennessee, are encouraged to increase awareness of the importance of a healthy lifestyle, regular exercise, and medical checkups. Now, therefore, I, A.J. Massey, Mayor of Madison County, Tennessee, do hereby proclaim the month of June 2024 as Men's Health Month in Madison County, Tennessee, and encourage all our citizens to pursue preventative health practices and early detection efforts. <coughs> That's all I have to show you. Thank you. We have a presentation from uh, Madison County UT TSU Extension Director <coughs> Kane Reeves, and I can tell you, serving on this uh, committee for a number of years, you don't realize how much 4-H does for our students and um, for the county in general until you've served on that committee. And we welcome him here to share some of that information with us. And so thank you guys for allowing us to be here today and uh, talk to you all about what we do in uh, the UTTSU Extension Office here in Madison County. Uh, Sir, uh, thank you for helping me. You can go forward. Uh, what I want to do today is just kind of explain to you guys what our office does. Uh, a lot of times y'all see um, those, those uh, proposals come across your desk and you kind of, you're like, what do they want? They want more money. Well, I'll uh, tell you a little bit about what we actually use that money for. And I brought along my uh, staff here today, or some of them, uh, and I want to introduce some of those folks. So uh, we'll start off with uh, Hunter Hunter Goodman, if you'll, if you'll stand. Hunter's our uh, Agriculture and Natural Resources Agent. Uh, and I'll talk a lot about what, what he does and provide some impact uh, for all the agents that are here today. Uh, Kelsey Koontz is a 4-H agent. Uh, Kelsey joined us back in December. So she, uh, she's learning a whole lot and has done a good job so far. Uh, Amber Morgan is not with us today, but she's the Tennessee uh, Nutrition and Consumer Education Program uh, Extension Agent, and that's short for TINSEP. You may hear that some, but um, she's a SNAP education. She does SNAP education, so that's formerly known as food stamps. Uh, and you, you guys don't provide funding for that program at all. Uh, and I'll talk to you a little bit about that as well. Tanil Short is back here. Uh, Tennille is actually, her, her mother, some of you may remember Miss Mary Blakemore, who uh, served in our office for about 47 years uh, as our administrative assistant. And so she retired and Tennille said, we can't leave the office without a Blakemore. So she came over about five years ago, Tennille. And so she serves as our family consumer sciences agent. Uh, and so we also have Santana Bingham back here in the back. He's a program assistant for 4 H Youth Development. Uh, he was uh, one of my 4 H members and a student from uh, Jackson Christian School who's uh, working on his uh, child development degree from the University of Memphis. Got Everett Charles, uh, extension program assistant with youth development. Delois Thompson, she's our glue that kind of keeps our office together. She's our administrative support assistant. Uh, she's been around for about 15 years. And Linda Seaman was an educator at um, Melissa's for 30 years with uh, Mr. Arnold, I think, hired her. And uh, so she came and worked with us after she retired from the school system part time. So um, just a little bit of information, uh, some history on how we got here. Uh, you guys are uh, kind of trailblazers, and you may not know, uh, known that before, but uh, fall of 1911, so about 100, 100 plus years ago, you guys decided there was a USDA uh, guy that was coming around, and he wanted to start some agriculture extension services in the area. And it was, it was something new, uh, but he wanted to provide a service for uh, the people, the farmers in the area, and uh, take that research that was happening in the USDA and the universities and disseminate that down to the public because uh, the population was growing, people were not uh, people were not getting a lot of yield from the actual uh, 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 crop, so they were trying to figure out a plan. So in 1911. Uh, they came to Madison County, they asked uh, the, at that time the court, the Madison County Court, to, um, to come together and create an a Ag Extension Service. And in October 2nd, on October 2nd, 1911, you guys 
uh, contributed $337.50 uh, that matched the federal funds to establish an extension service, uh, which if you look in 1914, the smith Lever Act, which was to establish a national extension service, uh, began. And so y'all were actually ahead of the game by three years. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, we, can, we can say that across the state of Tennessee, uh, Madison County was the first to appropriate funds for extension. And we look to today and look what you guys are doing for our program, uh, program now. So we appreciate that. So I wanted to give you guys some uh, input on what, what's going on in our office because you don't know if you don't know. Um, so like I said, Tanil Short is our Family Consumer Sciences agent, and some of y'all may not know what Family Consumer Sciences is, but it's uh, home economics. Anybody remember that from high school or middle school? So uh, they just changed the name. Some of the programs are still the same, but um, I wanted to pick out some of the things that she does that I thought were very impactful for our community. But uh, and I'll start at the top, but Parenting Apart is a, it's a co-parenting program where she takes and uh, these are court-ordered parents that have to come and take a class where uh, if they get divorced and they have children, they have to take this class and she kind of serves, she's not a mediator, but she serves as that person to kind of explain to them, these are some things that you might want to, want to consider if you have a child in the marriage uh, or in the divorce so that everything goes smooth up until they're 18 years old. Uh, dining with diabetes and take charge of your diabetes is uh, very important. Uh, you know that chronic disease management is very important in our community. Um, as the mayor pointed out earlier, um, Tai Chi is one of those things where um, is another uh, chronic disease help with arthritis, uh, she, she goes into some of our uh, senior living homes as well as some of our community centers and works, works with those members to help them get active and, and moving. Uh, something that I'm super excited about that, that we've seen great success with is the Tennessee Housing Development Agency uh, Home Buyer Education Program. And uh, pretty much, uh, Carly, you know about this program, but this is where uh, a person could come and take these uh, program or this program and earn a certificate for an opportunity to get a down payment or uh, assistance for a home. And so uh, I'll, I'll show you a little bit of impact here on the, on the back end in just a second. But the next thing I want to talk to you about is the Skill Up Tennessee program. And, uh, and I shared a little bit about this in the past, but Skill Up is one of those programs where uh, the person could come if they're interested in going back to school and uh, say vocational school and they want to get their nursing uh, certificate we could provide an opportunity for them to uh, that pathway to, to go to school and provide them with the resources they may need maybe scrubs and maybe um, books mileage uh, reimbursements and, and all those sorts of things <coughs> So uh, some impacts that we see from some of these programs that Tanil does is uh, we look at that home buyer education program and you see 145 people participated last year in that particular program and she had 43 that actually closed and that gives us a $6.3 million um, return on investment to the county uh, just from those uh, extent that extension program. And so, uh, I think that's pretty impactful uh, because people are planting uh, in, in Madison County. They're putting, putting roots down in Madison County. Uh, 45 people participated in the chronic condition programs. Uh, of those 45 uh, folks, uh, 100 of them said that they saw a lower blood pressure and also 86% said they started drinking fewer sugar beverages. Um, and then 23, uh, 231 people joined the six week walking program and then uh, if you look down at the bottom, half of that group lost two pounds. And, we, and when we look at our healthcare system, uh, $109,000 in medical costs was reduced because of, because of that impact. 
So just imagine if we were able to um, to do a little bit more, you know, what that could what that could do. So our traditional uh, one of our traditional programs, of course, is our ag and natural resource program that Hunter does, and so. Um, something that's really big in our county is our county standard test plots, and so those pro those are where you take in. Um, Hunter works with some farmers, and he they give him some some land uh, that grows alongside theirs, and they he tests um, corn, soybean, wheat, um, and cotton. Thank you, and so from there. He, he helps them determine the next season which variety of, uh, say, Bear, Monsanto, or uh, some other, other brands uh, had the best yield, uh, had the, that grew the fastest, um, and had, you know, had the best return. So, and I'll show you some impact from that in just a second. Um, PSCP, or the Pesticide Safety Education Program, is something that's huge in our in our county and very important because in order for those growers to spray anything on their on their land, they have to have this card from uh, Tennessee Department of Agriculture, and they actually have to take that from our office. And so um, they take that. Uh, Hunter offers that program, and so uh, we'll I'll show you impact there as well, uh, direct impact from to the county. Uh, Master B producer program. Um, this is also one of those things where we're teaching those producers how to uh, be resilient. They're learning those uh, skills to hopefully uh, grow their, their herd, hopefully uh, be, be sustainable and get the best thing for the buck. Uh, and to hopefully take those practices that we teach them and return them back to their farm. Uh, pond management was something big last year uh, that, that Hunter saw. Um, a lot of people called and said they were losing a lot of their, their fish in their ponds, and a lot of it was in environmental issues. And so um, this year and uh, some of last year, he also worked with some people on uh, creating ponds and also stocking them back up. So we're seeing a big increase in pond management this, uh, these last two years. So I'm not gonna go through this whole chart, but if you'll look at the, um, if you'll look at the uh, uh, CST plots uh, trials, you can see that uh, the yield versus the results, he had almost a $6 million uh, return on investment here in the county. And you can see based off the acreage and uh, the actual return uh, uh, based off the crop. And then uh, 115 of those people that did the private applicator uh, certification uh, generated about $565,000 in impact uh, from product sales. And then 65 people uh, participated in Dicamba and 70 Paraquat certifications were conducted and that produced a $769,000 impact for uh, adaptive practices. Next, we're without a horticulture agent. Uh, we've done uh, some interviews, so hopefully we uh, are able to hire somebody pretty soon. Uh, but uh, Ms. Bryant can tell you that our horticulture program in this county is huge and it's probably one of the largest ones in the state, um, if not the. Uh, so we have a master gardener program that is about 250 people and those are volunteers that have been trained that can go out and actually educate the public on uh, gardening. And so uh, you probably have seen downtown, the planters that are, that are around the city, uh, they go to Liberty Garden and, and clean up. There's a lot of service that they put out in the community that, uh, that we don't necessarily probably know who, do, who does it, but uh, it's master gardeners who, who do that. Uh, soil testing is a huge thing that happens in our office. People come in and say, my grass is not green. It won't get green and uh, I need this. So I'm trying to grow this particular vegetable in, in my backyard. I need to know why it will not grow. And so we do a lot of soil testing that we send off to Nashville and they do a diagnostics test and send a full report back 
on what you can include in your uh, in your uh, in, on your ground to make it make it right. Uh, there's a lot of lawn and gardening see, series that happens when we had a, an agent here. Uh, Celeste Scott did an absolute fabulous job. Um, she would make sure that everybody participated in um, these programs throughout the county. She rotated them different places. And uh, she also did some diagnostic stuff here on the, at the station. Uh, and then the master beekeeping program, this is something that kind of picked up there at the end before she left, but um, it's, a huge, it's a huge thing as well. There's lots of beekeepers around the area. Uh, so the Master Gardeners uh, Continued Education and Service, and if you'll see, I kind of broke these down. Uh, the horticulture uh, program values at uh, three, $394,000, and that includes their education, their uh, service, and their mileage. And then we look at the actual horticulture education that comes in, it's valued at uh, uh, $1,861 for a total of $137,000. And so, uh, if, you, if you, we surveyed several folks that said that they spend roughly around $935 on tools and, and plants to, to make the yard and stuff look nice. And so when we say uh, how much contribution did they give back to the community, that's 670, or 76, I'm sorry, $67,000 to, the local green industry. Um, and I'll just run through this one kind of kind of quick. Uh, our supplemental nutrition assistance program is um, pretty cool in that it's no cost to you guys. It's offering a service that hopefully is, or our goal is to hopefully one, teach those folks that receive those supplemental or SNAP benefits to uh, use their benefits better and then hopefully one day not have to use them. Um, so uh, one way she does that is she does the farmer's market fresh program and she goes down to the farmer's market, uh, thinks she did them sporadically throughout last year, uh, and has a plan to do them this year. Amber has been with us less than a year, so her impact is not that huge, but it's, it's growing. But Tanil did them before then. Uh, but what happens is at the farmer's market, she does some uh, demonstrations and gives out some samples uh, of those foods that say the farmer's market is uh, selling. And they also get to take home some incentive items as well as a recipe. And at the end of the series, hopefully they have all the recipes to the actual uh, series. Uh, cooking demonstrations happen throughout the community. Um, she, she works with all kinds of folks, and you'll see in the next slide, uh, quick wins are just social media blurbs to attract those folks that, are, that, that she's working with. And you know, co coalition building is important because we're trying to reach an audience that uh, may be harder to, harder to get to participate in those programs. Um, so you can just see here, uh, just in those uh, six, four, five to six months that she had been here, she had about 59 participants that were participating in those four uh, areas, I believe it's four. And then uh, she also was able to develop that coalition and get them started. And lastly, our uh, 4-H Youth Development Program is a huge program in this county. Uh, it's a huge program in the state, and I, I would hold it to any other, any other program in the, in the state. Uh, some of the programs that we are highly noted for is the 4 H Health Rocks program, which is a drug alcohol tobacco prevention program. And uh, this is important. Uh, you all know that those are, uh, those are areas that kids need to learn about. We don't necessarily teach them about the drug. It's more of uh, how to prevent from getting hooked on drugs and different things like that, saying no and, and peer pressure and all those good things. Um, on my own is a simulation that teaches young people how to uh, how to make it in the world. They get a a mock job, and so they take that those benefits from that particular job. They uh, have to shop around throughout the month, and they actually have to spend their paycheck. And hopefully, they make it throughout the end of the month with actual money left over. 
uh, and I'll I'll come to y'all hopefully and and get your get your help when we put those uh, programs on. Uh, there's lots of camp experiences that kids get to go to, and I thank you guys for always supporting us uh, each year uh, with your uh, contribution line uh, to help send kids to those different conferences. We never, uh, and, and I tell uh, Mr. Tippett this, we never have enough money to send kids places. Uh, and and uh, that's, I mean, that's just the nature of the beast, but we keep moving. Uh, judging teams is, uh, is another way that we just uh, instill lessons that kids are interested in, and I'll talk a little bit more about those. And Kelsey has done a good job in the short time that she's been here coming in and bringing more agriculture uh, topics uh, into our program. So uh, we reach about 3,700 4-H members in a, um, in a year. And so um, that number is from last year and I expect it to grow this year. We will find out in, uh, in late July, late uh, early August, uh, the actual numbers. But um, we picked up, so Jackson Madison County School System, we thank Superintendent King, uh, a great partner to have. Um, and, and we've been working with Jackson Christian School as well as our homeschool population. And you can see some of those programs that we teach, the STEM, Nutrition, Leadership, Consumer Education, and Money Management programs throughout the year. Um, the 4-H Honor Club program is uh, huge. There's Last year we had 22 members that joined. Uh, that, that gave us about 254 members. That makes us the largest 4-H Honor Club program in the state, uh, and we continue to hold, hold true with that. Uh, 34 of those attended 4-H Roundup, and I know I keep saying this, but that was the largest in the state. Uh, that was our largest delegation we've ever taken uh, last year. And then uh, 21 of those uh, participated in 4-H Congress, which was also our largest delegation ever, uh, with 15 of them becoming 4-H All-Stars. And so people, people look at our 4-H program as a model because they wonder how we have kids participating. And, I, and we wonder ourselves, but we, I don't know if we, we pride ourselves on what a great job that we do, but I think it's, it speaks highly because kids these days have so many opportunities to do other things. And for them to choose the 4-H program, I think that's pretty awesome. Um, and we hope to continue that. So I wanted to, uh, my zero fail, but I wanted to uh, show you guys the total impact of uh, the total impact of our programming in the in the county, and it, it rounds out to about ten ten thousand or ten million dollars, um, and I think that's pretty awesome. And it's grew from uh, 2020, where we was around uh, nine million. So you just see it keeps growing, uh, and. If you look at what you guys give us as a, a commission, uh, which is about, is about uh, $344,000 uh, uh, from last year, uh, we generate for dollar, dollar for dollar about $30, $30 in return. So for every dollar you give us, we give you back $30. So that's what I have to uh, offer you guys today, I'm uh, welcome to take questions and my staff's here to answer any questions that you may have. You all can contact us anytime, uh, stop by and see us. Um, if you ever have a need, please let us know. We're here to help. Commissioner Tippett, as chair, would you like to say anything? Well, I'd just like to say that uh, I didn't realize myself, and I, I think a lot of people here didn't realize the impact that Kane and his people have on the community. And with almost 4,000 students from Madison County Schools in 4-H, I think that's, that's great. Yeah. Thank you, Kane. Thank you. Thank all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, reports from county officials, standing and special committees, any old business action thereon, and by the board. I notice that Dr. King's here. Would you like to? You're welcome to speak anytime. Thank you for being here. Uh, any other 
Commissioner Wall. Surprise, he's here as many graduations they had been really good. Um, the Excess Resale Committee met, and I've got three recommendations uh, to come before the commission. Uh, you know, we've talked about over the last uh, six months or so, we've been trying to find a way, a platform, an electronic platform, to be able to, uh, to complete the sales of all of our excess resale properties. We have since found that with the help of County IT and uh, County Attorney Jay Bush, we have a uh, process that uh, uh, we want to bring it to, to you for approval that uh, Jay has written up and uh, we've sent out. And so the committee recommends approval of the new electronic platform called GovEase to handle all aspects of our excess resale process. Uh, the process, like I said, was written by Attorney Bush and, and Senate. And that's committee recommendation. It's committee recommendation. Any discussion? Yes. Could you give us the synopsis for the benefit of the public? Do you have not know that? Do you have a copy of that, James? Of the terms and conditions? Yeah. Um, while the attorney is bringing that up, uh, basically it takes, <clears throat> whereas in the past we've had just a, an antiquated system where you would come in, uh, write a check to, just to be able to come and bid on properties. And then we have we hold several meetings to be able uh, to allow the public to come in, bid on those properties, purchase those properties. Then it goes and it's published in the paper for 10 days. Then we come back again and uh, have another bid off on those properties. It's just, it's just an antiquated system the way we've been doing it. We went out and we've researched other counties and uh, other counties, most other counties have now gone to an electronic format in which most people in here, especially our department heads, are familiar with Gov Deals, uh, where they put all the stuff online, allow you to bid on it, pay your, the, the uh, buyer's premium and everything online. Everything's done online. There's no cash accepted or checks accepted by our uh, commission assistant, which helps, you know, quite a bit, but uh, you've got some of your... Yeah, I, I don't have the terms and conditions, but I can tell you what it, what it says. So, um, we, we'd moved to an online system under state law when a uh, property is sold at the delinquent tax sale. Uh, if no one offers the taxes owed, then the county makes a forced bid on that property, and that property <coughs> then goes on the county's excess resale property list. And as y'all who served on the committee know, that committee is charged with uh, marketing and selling those properties. Um, under uh, the law, when someone makes an offer on one of those properties, there's a requirement that the offer is published in the newspaper for 10 days, and then after that publication period, others can <coughs> increase the offer by at least 10%, and you essentially have a, an auction for the property. Well, what the committee has decided to do is to move that process online using the same platform that the Chancery Court uses for delinquent tax sales and there would be an offer period a couple times per year where individuals could make offers on the property online. Then there'd be the publication which is required uh, in the newspaper and then you'd have an online auction for anyone who wants to increase that offer. So it's really just uh, you know taking it out of the the, the committee still has to ultimately approve it, but instead of the committee holding an auction, it's done online. It also stops the county from having to collect checks because the payments are made online. Um, if someone wants to make an offer on these properties, they get a letter of credit from their bank, just like with the tax sale, and it'll show how much they have that they are able to purchase properties with. And you know, so it's all-, all Reducing human hands. Intact. Right, exactly. It'll, I think it'll be a more efficient okay. process for, for uh, taking care of these properties for the county. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, second recommendation from the uh, committee let's go, was... Let's, let's vote on that. Oh, I thought you were I'm sorry. I apologize. Yes, you should vote. Okay. Uh, I, I, basically, I'm, my interest is uh, how would one know to... What are you doing to for people to know to go online and for the people to don't have any online experience. Uh, buyers, you know, that really don't know anything about online. It so how be, are we gonna... It'd be the same people? process that we currently do with as far as advertising. We would market it and advertise it. So where would you advertise it? Uh, we do that in the papers, uh, social media, all the required places by statute. <clears throat> Committee recommendation, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? 
passed. Okay, the next uh, recommendation is to uh, currently our fees, which include administrative fees, um, uh, all costs associated with the sale, filing fees with the clerk's office, administration, administrative cost, uh, legal fees, and things like that. Uh, we collect anywhere from $600 to $700 in that range, depending on the property. I mean, you have to understand that a lot of these properties have demolition liens. Some of them we've had to accept less than uh, the amount that was actually owed uh, on the property. Uh, so then that requires the attorney to have to file certain uh, uh, paperwork with the, with the court that costs money. There's certain things like that. But anyway, the amount that we are collecting with each sale ranges anywhere from six to seven hundred dollars. The committee is recommending that we uh, assess a buyer's premium fee of one thousand dollars for each sale, which would cover all of those fees as well as the Govies platform. That's committee recommendation. Any discussion? All those in favor of raising the fees say aye. 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 All opposed? And the last recommendation is that instead of the monthly uh, meeting and uh, tax sales that we uh, have been that we've had over in the past. Uh, currently, uh, uh, Attorney Bush is involved. When, when he's involved, he has those uh, what he was describing just a few minutes ago. Those sales uh, with uh, uh, at, at the courthouse is what month? What months are those, Jay? Uh, the, the, the tax sales that my office has at the Chancery Court are in February and September. In February and September, the committee is recommending uh, after conferring with the county attorney that we have two set tax sales per year to kind of coincide with that, which would be the month of March and the month of October beginning in 2025. However, uh, we do have several properties in uh, inventory now that we want to go ahead and take care of. And then uh, the uh, tax, uh, our sale for this year would be, would take place in August of 2024. It's committee recommendation. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Passes. Thank you. That's all from the committee. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, we have mentioned, you mentioned it, not just with regard to this committee, the newspapers that we advertise this information. To what newspapers do we do that? Do what? I mean, what newspapers are we advertising in there? Uh, the Jackson Post and the Crime Scene Examiner. So the Jackson, I know they're pretty much uh Reduce Jackson Sun is pretty much to a memory. But um, the thing is, is um, my concern is always that the public is as informed as they can be. And the thing is, is that I imagine that most of the commissioners here don't know how many um, sites the uh, examiner has in your district. Which also means and, and also, if it's a weekly or bi-weekly paper, which also means that the information is not getting out to the public. We need to do something about that. I don't know. I don't have the answer because everybody is not computer, do, do not have computers. But can I please, please? Everybody do not have computers. But the, so the thing, I don't have a hang up about the resource utilized, but we need to do something to keep the public more informed. And you have more accessibility to that government. <coughs> Any other discussion? <coughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Blue lottery vote. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. <coughs> but, Sarah, do you want to just discuss all the different places that we do advertise? I post it on the website. We post it on our Facebook page. Um, we do post it in the Jackson Post and in the Crime Scene Examiner. The reason that we are not using the Jackson Sun anymore is the cost. Okay. So. What's the notice? When you post how many days before the We product. post it two weeks before each, two weeks before the sale. Commissioner Brown. I love Sarah. Very <laughs> good respect for Sarah. Thank you. But quite frankly, The price of keeping me informed about how you're spending my money as a taxpayer should not be a consideration. We need to do something because we're not keeping the public informed. <clears throat> I'm sure I'm not the only person that they always ask me, what are you all doing? When did this happen? Things of this nature. 
We are not keeping the public informed. It's no secret. You, when you leave here, if you stop and talk to 10 people, at least three of them are going to raise some of the kind of questions. We, as a responsible body, need to give some consider, not considering, we need to do something about that. We can't create the Jackson Sun again. Much of that is not in our hands. I acknowledge that, but we, we got to uh, uh, address the problem. How many properties do we have now? Almost 90. 90. 90. Mm -hmm. uh, Commissioner Brown, but basically, the, if you follow the process over the years, you'll find the people, they are informed because they are the people who normally have an interest in property that's on the tax rolls, so they're waiting to find out who these are. So majority of the time, I would think they are, they are informed uh, because they, they want to know and they will call if they can't find it anywhere else. I wasn't talking about property. I was in the, one at a time, please. I was not talking about property. I'm talking about period. And the thing is, is that if, if they were informed, they wouldn't be asked the question. If they were informed, they wouldn't uh, be raising, raising the issues they're raising on the radio and things of that nature. There's, it's, it's no secret that they're not informed. Well, here's what I think we could do to, <coughs> the committee can take this up. Since we're only gonna have two times a year, we could look at all the advertising and we could look at announcing it at the county commission on TV before that committee because it's only two times a year so we can we can do some things to help get more information out there to the public and I, I think we will so I'm not, it, I don't want to talk anymore but just I'm not just talking about property right I'm talking about what we do period period not just property Mr. Chairman, what, we're, we're, we, just from the Rules and Bylaws Committee, being chairman of that, I mean, I'm open to any suggestions that the commissioner has. If he'd just like to give me a call sometime, we'll discuss it, and I'll be more than willing to, to do that and even take it up in committee if he has some suggestions that we could change and do, do better. Sure. Thank you. Any uh, I would like to concur with uh, Commissioner Brown because that would be a company <laughs> going about property. And, and I know it's been on hold lately, and they really don't know the process. So, and I know some of the same people are buying the properties, business people. So we do have to do a better job, but we're not pointing fingers. But as taxpayers, they have a right to know. People have a right to know what's going on. Mm. All right, any other committees? Mayor, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm the uh, airport liaison, and I just wanted to share a little news about the airport, and everybody may be paying attention. Uh, the construction of the new, new runway is underway. Hopefully, it'll be ready in the fall. If you didn't know that. I was able to tour the airport a few weeks ago, and I saw one of our own commissioners in action. Uh, found out some duties he has that's quite interesting, uh, tracking down varmints that, that get on the property. So I thought that was quite comical. Um, Mr. Chair, I just uh, want to say uh, our investment that we're doing in the airport is definitely uh, getting uh, utilized and going forward, it's going to be a big issue uh, in our community. Uh, we also have Senator Jackson here uh, and he's been uh, working hard to try to get some state money and I know uh, Dr. Barron's been working with the state and the federal government and we're hearing good news about this so just wanted to kind of give right an update so the airport's a big topic of conversation and jet surface hopefully we happen soon <coughs> Senator you Jackson coming. would you like to address the <coughs> Commission well thank you for I'm glad to be here today uh, of course we finished session a little over two weeks ago and uh, I'm uh, out now going to all my counties I have seven counties that I represent so uh, this is my first uh, meeting to go to for a county commission <coughs> try to visit all of them in city council meetings and uh, just I'm on the several committees uh, state and local government uh, 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 state and local and uh, government operations and health committee and, uh, and so I'm, I'm very very tuned to what happens with state government local government and trying to help help with that but the airport we work very hard on that we came this close to probably getting the 10 million that we asked for for the state uh, we visited with Commissioner Bryson uh, Commissioner of Finance, we visited with the, uh, Commissioner of, of, T, of TDOT, uh, different ones, and uh, they all say this is really needed here. Currently, there are five uh, primary airports in the state. Uh, we want this one to be the sixth one. We got a tower. We got so many things going for us here in uh, in Madison County to make this a primary airport. And I think we're Nick. This next session, we'll probably get additional funding from the state of Tennessee to to make that happen. But there are a lot of good things happening. I think jet surfaces 
is uh, just about to be to come into uh, this uh, this county, which we're desperately needing, which Ford and all the other suppliers are, have been asking for. So just a lot of good things going on. And, and uh, so anyway, thank you for letting me be here today, and I appreciate the, the recognition. Thank you, Senator Jackson. Mr. Mayor, do you have something? I was just going to recognize Senator Jackson as well. Uh, I will say, um, just publicly, I'll take an opportunity. Thank you. Um, more than anybody in Nashville, I hear from Senator Jackson just about weekly during session. Uh, we were up there, I was up there four or five times, three times specifically about the airport. And he worked hard to get other legislators from West Tennessee in the room to advocate for this airport. So it's not just Jackson and Madison County asking for it, it's the entire West Tennessee region. Uh, and I don't want to underplay the jet service. 97% um, takeoff ratio, right now we're at about 47%. So if you think about 50% 50, 50 of the time, you don't take off when, when they say you are. Uh, going to jet service, that's 97% takeoff. Uh, and it flies twice as fast. So you, you get to Chicago, get to Atlanta in an hour, a little over an hour instead of a few hours. So uh, I believe we'll be first on the list. I hope next year for some funding from the state. I'm hearing good things from Congressman Kustoff from the federal level. So we should hear something on that soon. Uh, but our, our airport is becoming a player in the West Tennessee, and it's going to change the landscape for all West Tennessee counties. But I want to say thank you for being responsive and for reaching out and, and asking me about votes and, and letting us have our voice in Nashville. So I appreciate that. Any other committee reports? <laughs> Any amendments transfers to the General Fund, School Department, Capital Projects, Highway Department, Debt Services, Juvenile Court Services, Budget for Physical 2023-24? Commissioner Alexander. Right, Mr. Chairman, we have uh, several amendments this time. Most of these are cleanup style amendments, you know, the end of the year stuff. Start off with the uh, school, school uh, system amendments. Um, item one, $2,400. It's for regular instruction program to recognize the revenue and expenditures for a donation that was given. Uh, no change in MOE or fund balance under this amendment. Committee recommendation. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Next Mr. item. Chairman, I make a motion to take all these ones. have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. second. I have a second by Commissioner Black. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you all. Uh, $3,500 capital outlay, the improvements to the Liberty Therapy Barn increased by $3,500. This is to cover those expenditures. Um, <clears throat> item three, $53,001. Uh, this is the integrative school models uh, budget amendment to align the grant, or the ISM grant in Munis with the revision and E-plan. This does not change MOE or fund balance. Next item is $1,200, budget amendment to increase local retirement and reduce pensions for the TSW uh, grant budget. This is no change in MOE or fund balance. Uh, the last one's $365,156.25, public school security grant. This is a budget amendment to revise the public school security grant to match the E-plan revision. This is no change in MOE or uh, fund balance. It's a committee recommendation. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Pass. Moving on to the county side, uh, we have the, all the next three are going to affect fund balance. Uh, one is EMA, $12,000. This is for an HVAC unit at, at the EMA building. Committee recommendation. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, county buildings, 112,000 for 87. This is the, <coughs> to work on the annex, replacing the windows and the ridge cap at the courthouse. Committee recommendation. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, Parks and Recreation, 21,000 on capital fund for a, a, a vehicle purpose, a vehicle purchase. Uh, this money will be reimbursed for gov deals once the uh, once those payments are received in gov deals. It's committee recommendation. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, next item is a medical examiner. I'll make a motion we take these next three at the same time. Have a motion to take them all. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. These next three are just transfers. Medical examiner $43,060 transferring between line items. Uh, recovery court $12,123 uh, transferring between line items. Recovery court $10,000 transfer between line items. Committee recommendation. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. 
The next, uh, the next several, one, yeah. two, three, four, five, six, seven, are, are uh, insurance recovery funds. Mr. Walker, I'd like to we take insurance recovery funds uh, all at once. They're all second. reimbursements for selling you. Commissioner Black seconds. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, we have fire department, $200. This is reimbursement for live fire training. Fire department, $300 reimbursement for live fire training. Fire department, $500 reimbursement for live fire training. Fire department, $13,902. Uh, this is sale of vehicles. Fire department, $14,226, sale of vehicles. And uh, fire department, $9,202, sale of vehicles. Sheriff's department, $36,554.43, sale of vehicles, insurance recovery. This does not affect MOE or <coughs> Bondocks. Any recommendation? Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Uh, all uh, these next two are, are, state, are, are come out of reserves of state mandated uh, circuit court 27,000 this is the transfer funds from uh, reserve for new computers for general sessions and circuit court committee recommendation all those in favor say aye aye, aye. all opposed passes the next one is a uh, register of deeds $7,165 this is the transfer funds from their reserve uh, for the purchase of a scanner. This committee recommendation. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Mm -hmm. Passes. Mr. Chairman, the uh, the budget is complete, but it is is not ready for presentation to the full commission yet. We will be presenting that at the meeting next month. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, consideration of resolution to rezone property located at 1020 block of Denmark Jackson Road from FAR Forestry and Agricultural uh, to Wholesale and Warehousing District comprising of 201.58 acres more or less. Uh, Stand here. Or yeah. Commissioner Tippett. Uh, this is the first I've heard of this. It's in uh, my district, but I don't know what it is, and Stan's not here, or anybody to can we explain make, Can we make a motion just to I'm, pass it? I'll make a motion to table to the next month. Perfect. We have a first and second table. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Table this to next month. Uh, possible resolution to approve the economic impact plan for the columns economic development area as requested by the Industrial Development Board and City of Jackson. Make a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. And a second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Resolution passes. Resolution to approve contract with Blue Cross Blue Shield for the county employee health insurance. Do I have a motion to approve? A second. I have a first and second to approve the uh, health insurance. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Amendment of the nine members um, to the environmental we're going to go to number 13, do the notary publics at the end, if that's okay. Uh, appointment of nine members to the Environmental Advisory Appeals Board by CLB one year term Bart Walls, Mike Butler, Jim Holman, Charles Bird, Robert Mullins, Jeff Wall, Jeff Clark, Chris Todd, Eric Turner, incumbents. Do I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, make a motion to reappoint. As stated. Have a first and second reappoint. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Passes. Appointment of seven members uh, to the Madison County Property Code Enforcement Appeals Board by CLB, one year term. Shane Lee, Mark A. Day, Cleveland Davis, Mike Winslow, Richard Watson, Bart Walls, Eric Turner, incumbents. I'll make a motion to reappoint. I believe the, the one vacant seat, that's incorrect. It should be, there should be seven on there. Okay. The newer version has yeah, newer version version corrected. It's corrected. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Passes. Appointment of seven members to the Municipal Solid Waste 
Planning Region Board by mayor with CLB approval, one-year term, Mike Winslow, Billy Burkhead, Mark Aday, Ken Tupford, Gary Tippett, incumbents, and two vacant seats. Mr. Mayor. I'd like to ask for a motion to reappoint the five listed and add Bart Walls and Hunter Brown for the vacancies. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Second. Second. I have first and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Passes. Um, election of notary publics. So moved. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any and all matters related to and connected with matters set forth. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I got one that I, that I omitted from my notes for the uh, budget committee report. Okay. Uh, and Matt, I do apologize about that. Uh, Matt is needing a uh, overnight. He is needing a letter of intent for the phone system agreement for the for, so they can get started on the new phone system to acquire the equipment and everything. It requires no money. He just needs the the, the letter that we've approved him to go ahead and do it. Okay, this is committee recommendation. All those in favor of the letter of intent, say aye. 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 All opposed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Commissioner Mr. Black. Chairman, it's not related to this agenda, but many of us, 25 members in the county commission, what is what we're, we're in, some of us really don't have a clear understanding in relationship to our financial director. Where are we? What, or do we have one or what? That's just something information-wise that I think many of us would like to really understand where we at on that process. My understanding is we have one. She is on leave, and we hope that she comes back. She has a doctor's appointment today, and I believe once that doctor's appointment releases her, she 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 will be back. Thank you. Thank you for the update. Okay. Uh, motion to adjourn. <laughs> All in favor say aye. aye. Thank you.